I think people want somebody now that's going to protect them and protect this country because we're not going to be a great country for long if we keep going the way we're going right now. I want him to show his birth certificate. There's something on that birth certificate that he doesn't like. Oh, I think the way any white president asked to be shown the birth certificate. It's real. It's really mine. You know, it's like so real. very sexy, I want to tell you. Uh, he knows how to get to me. Isn't Welcome back to Rattlesnake TV, guys. Today we're going to be watching a throwback of a Donald Trump interview with the hens from The View from 2011. I was watching this the other day and thought that I just have to make a video on this and share some thoughts with you guys because the attitude towards Donald Trump from then till now is absolutely remarkable to see. And it highlights a few very, very interesting points which we will discuss. So let's start with the first part where the whole entire audience stands and cheers for him and the hens give him a hug and a kiss and tell him how great it is to see him, which is just a stark contrast to how they acted after the propaganda started rolling in. Okay, so while President Biden, who cares about his grandchildren, yes. is working very hard on this, as you just pointed out, he has record climate investments. Uh, former uh, President, I mean, he can't even say it, former p -p -p <laughs> Trump. Uh, he says he would be a dictator on day one and drill, drill, drill. You know, he couldn't care less about his grandchildren. And oh boy, does he spit some facts in this one, which makes you realize why he caused such a stir in the first place. Let's get into it. Donald Trump is a billionaire, a real estate mogul, and a television star. But does he really want to add president? of the United States to his resume. A lot of people would like him to. Please, let's find out and please welcome my friend, Donald Trump. Whenever you're on, whenever you're on with us, we're very happy. Well, we love it. Okay, so I'm going to take you at your word that you have not decided yet when you're going to run, but you're thinking about it and you've expressed some of your views, uh, which are controversial and in many ways, uh, yeah. But but not, but not I'll, to her. <laughs> well, not to her. Okay, you're a Republican, so, but, but let's we'll say point point. let's say that you do decide in the spring, right? Um, and your ideas are resonate so much. On the other hand, um, you know, we saw Newt Gingrich apologizing for his marriages and divorces. You've had three marriages, two sort of uncomfortable divorces. Do you think no, that the... not really. They were very comfortable. <laughs> well, <laughs> we won't be here either. Do you, do, you, do you think that the country, uh, that would bother anybody? I think the country is doing so badly, they want somebody that's going to help it. I think the country is never been in a position like it is right now. It's being ripped off by every nation, every intelligent nation in the world, whether it's China, they're taking our jobs, they're making all our product, and then they loan us back the money, we pay them interest. That is Whether crazy. it's OPEC, OPEC, which is, I mean, they're having a field day right now. How about the, the Arab League? They say, we want you to go in and attack Libya. Mm -hmm. These are the wealthiest countries in the world. Why aren't they paying us? Okay, Why so then they changed their minds also. That, but you didn't so, answer so, my question. No, I did answer your question. Well, you, I really you think, think it people... Won't matter. I think maybe 10 years ago it would have mattered, yeah. five years ago. Yeah. The fact is, I think people want somebody now that's going to protect them and protect this country, because we're not going to be a great country for long if we keep going the way we're going right now. If you... When, when we have... Barbara... When we have France, France leading the charge, okay, France, this is the, our new leader. By the way, they led for about two hours. After that, nobody's seen them. I don't know well, if you know that or not. Geographically, so they should. Let me just ask a follow-up question to that. Let me follow up question to that. Let me just ask a follow-up question to that. Let's say you run. Uh, you've given a lot of thought for this. Uh, who would you like as your vice president, possibly Sarah Palin? Well, I think it's far too early even to discuss that. I'm going to make a decision sometime prior to June. I'm thinking about it very strongly. I think I'd do a really good job. I think I'd protect this country like it's not being protected. Now, it's funny. So many of the things I say, now politicians are saying, hey, that's right. Why don't we, like, why aren't they paying us? If you look at North Korea, South Korea, we're protecting South Korea. They're making a fortune. Let's call it hundreds of billions of dollars of profit on us. We have 25,000 soldiers over there protecting them. They don't pay us. Why are they paying us? You'd be treating us? this like a business. No, no, a business with heart. Okay. Believe me, it's, there's a lot of heart. 
It's a business, but it's also a business with heart. We will destroy this country. It won't be a war if the economics of this country keep going the way they're going. We're not going to have Could a you, country. You're kind of a social Fred, liberal, Fred, Donald. Donald. You better. know, you're a social liberal. Could you actually get the base to vote for you in the primary? Well, every poll is saying that I'm the one that does the best. They you know, do, they're they, doing polls. They and actually have you a higher approval rating than Mitt Romney, Tim Pawlenty, uh, John Boehner. Well, but out of, all the, out of those, if you're thinking of competition within the party to get the nomination, really your biggest competition will be, should you get the nomination, President Obama. Well, I was the only one. Him? A CNN poll just came out, as you probably saw, and mm -hmm. I was the only one that was essentially tied with Obama. Everyone was <laughs> 10 and 15 points down. So, you know, we'll see. But I haven't made a decision. I'll be making no. a decision, and I will do a good job if I decide yes and if I win. No. So I'm sure you guys picked up on the part where they say, you're a social liberal, Donald. He's you're kind of a social good. liberal, Donald. Donald. You know, better. you're a social liberal. Wow. I mean, I thought that he was a far-right extremist. I mean, that's what they say now, isn't it? He's a racist and a misogynist and a xenophobe and all of the pejoratives. But here, they think he's too liberal for the conservatives. And his rhetoric isn't different. It's make America great again and stop getting screwed by the rest of the world. And this was 13 years ago. The problem has gotten so much worse since then. The country is now $35 trillion in debt. The country is being overrun by illegal immigration and also fentanyl. And their relationships on the world stage have soured completely to the point where Eastern powers are forming alliances specifically designed to kick America off the throne and create a new global reserve currency. And now I'm pretty sure that Donald Trump wouldn't have beaten Obama if he actually ran in 2012 because Obama was too popular and the whole entire establishment was behind him, which is why he intelligently ran against Crooked Hillary in 2016. It's just awfully good that someone with the temperament of Donald Trump is not in charge of the law in our country. Yeah, because you'd be in jail. Secretary Clinton. But just imagine for a second, if Donald Trump had have gotten eight years from 2012 until 2020, imagine how different the world could be. And now onto the next part where they talk about Barack Hussein Obama's place of birth, which highlights how unfiltered Donald Trump was back then. And this is a topic I haven't heard about in a while. Has this been resolved? I'm not sure. But more to the point, this was when Trump used to really say whatever was on his mind. He had a real swagger about him at this time, and he still does, but not to the same extent. And I know he's older now, and there's definitely some fatigue there. I mean, look what he's been through. But I really believe that this was why there was such a magnetism towards him. He used to just say what was on his mind. And it's such a breath of fresh air when you compare him to a conventional politician. Okay. I, I just was wondering, because you, you were talking about how all these countries have been doing this, you, you would admit that this has sort of been business as usual for the last 30 years. I mean, oh, yes. we have, oh, yes. we, I, so I this say, is not, I, because it's nothing, I, I, it's nothing new. This has been going on. So you're saying you would come in it's and stop on. that practice. But it's never been as bad as it is now. We've never had a trillion six in deficits. It was as bad when George Bush left office. So no, he no, was the one who have, left this, uh, right. who left right. this Excuse me, mess. I'm a Republican. That's George right. Bush, okay. he gave us Obama. I'm not a big fan of George Bush. I'm not a fan well, of Obamacare. Let's not talk about what, who I gave know, who, I baby, know, Whoopi. Because we're all going to get Whoopi's vote. If you did, if you did, let me just ask, if you did, I'm and concerned. she likes me. She even put I, I me in do, her I movies. Was just say, she put okay, me in her movies, yes, right? A long time friends. ago. Yes. So how much did I judge? Nothing. Like they right? say in the garden. <laughs> <laughs> if you so did beat Obama, though, it's just Would business. Would you say you're Donald. fired to him if you did beat him in the general well, election? I don't want to trivialize it. You know, we have this show that turned out to be such a success. Or maybe that's why I'm sitting here partially because people have gotten to know you're me. Really respect respect that that what about this? You recently said about President Obama. I'm going to quote you. He grew up and nobody knew him. Nobody knows who he is until later in his life. The whole thing is very strange. What are you driving at there? Are you a Bertha, well, Donald? Okay. Let, me, let me just tell you, I was a really good student at the best school. I'm not like a smart guy, okay? They make these Berthas into the worst idiots. Why doesn't he show his birth certificate? I, I think he probably... He have to? Because I have to, and everybody else has to, Whoopi. I'm sure Why that you can't wouldn't you show... show his birth Excuse me. <laughs> Quick interruption, guys. If you have not liked the video and if you're enjoying this, then make sure to like it down below. It helps me out enormously. And also, if you have not subscribed to the channel, you are more than welcome to do so. And if you are subscribed to the channel, make sure that YouTube hasn't unsubscribed you. Back to it. Why? No, excuse me. I really believe there's a birth certificate. Why? Look, she's smiling. Why doesn't he show his birth certificate? And you know what? I wish he would, because I think it's a terrible pal that's hanging over him. He should show his birth certificate. The other thing, if you go back to my first grade, my kindergarten, people remember me. 
Nobody from those early years. That's not true. We have pictures of them. What are you talking about? Okay, show there's, me a picture. There are kids you know, in Hawaii. There are people in Hawaii. I've there seen are people that he's grown I've up. Seen 13, no, but as I little haven't kids. seen early pictures. But more importantly, yeah. why doesn't he? And, and you know what? I think he probably was, but the word probably why would be. He, why the did he have to defend because himself you're against some, you know why? against uh, an accusation? Because, because if you're going to be the president, because if you're going to be the president of the United States, it says very profoundly that you have to be born in this country. But did well, any of the president be the president? Did George Bush? You cannot be the president. No one has ever asked George Bush or said to George no. Bush, is, I'm sorry, is Hawaii Reagan? not part of the I'm United States? George Bush. And I'm not why? saying I was but a fan why? of George Bush. No, no. You know that better than anybody. But, why? but George okay. Bush was born in this country. That's right. What is, uh, isn't uh, Hawaii yeah, still yeah, part of the United States? Question? Am I gone? You know, do you, you question know what? whether he was or not because he hasn't come forward no, no, with it? No. I, I grew up in New York. Wall Street was a big part. I have seen fraud and I have seen scandal and I have seen things that a lot of people don't see. I've seen people take a hundred dollar bill and make it a million dollar we're bill. We're going to have to pause. Get to the point. Okay. The point is, <laughs> I don't. I can't rely on some newspaper that they show in that. In order to become president of the United States, in order I to get want him to show his license, birth certificate. certificate. I want him to show his Why? birth certificate. Why? There's something okay, on that birth not, certificate that he doesn't like. Oh my God! Oh, that's a terrible that is thing just to say. I'm telling you, you Donnie, I love you. I'm telling you. I love you too. I think that's the biggest pile of dog mess I've heard in ages. The question is. Why not show it, right? There's something on his birth certificate that he doesn't want to show. It's not because it's the last time you were born. Any white president asked to be shown the birth certificate. When you become a president of the United States of America, you know that he's American. I'm saying that's BS. Are you saying that it just only lets people have doubt? Do you want to talk about it about the apprentice? It doesn't matter. It's doing great. The ratings are through the roof. This is very So I don't know if we ever got to the bottom of the whole Obama birthplace thing. Maybe someone can let me know in the comments. But needless to say, Donald Trump is a different guy now to the man he was in 2011 and even 2016 for that matter. Back then, he was just winning in every single department of life. And then he made the immense sacrifice to go into a life of politics and cement his legacy instead of just being a baller until he died. And you almost get the feeling that as much as he's been involved with politics in his life, in his business dealings, and he's done very high level deals and dealt with all kinds of people and politicians, even he could never have predicted exactly what would happen when he ran against the machine. And we talked about the fatigue on Trump before, even though he holds it better than anyone. You can see that the past eight years of slander, attacks, litigation, impeachments, and an assassination attempt has taken its toll on him, and it would be impossible to keep your swagger and charm in the same way. But I also get the feeling that there's the same sense of fatigue with the country as a whole, because the establishment attacks and the election mishaps and all of the rest has just caused such a divide in the country, and it's really not in a good way. It's a sad state of affairs, to be honest with you. Half of the country is one way, half of the other. It's just very sad. And this is actually something that I worry about with the Trump campaign this year. It's like, how many people like Trump in terms of policy, but they wouldn't vote for him because they're just so over it all. I mean, I obviously think that would be a bad decision, but I think that it's kind of a realistic scenario. Also, how many people voted for him in 2016 because they saw the energy and they saw the rawness? And now maybe they're interpreting this campaign as one that isn't bringing it in the same way and isn't challenging the status quo in the same way. And I don't want to sound like a broken record here, but this is why I think that Vivek Ramaswamy would have been the perfect VP for Trump. He brings that youth and that intensity and that intelligence and the outsider spirit that perhaps isn't there as much this time around. I really think that it was a big mistake not to give him that spot. And I'm just thinking out loud here, so I'm interested to know what your thoughts are, especially if you're living in America. What are you seeing? Is he as popular as ever? Or do you think there is a level of fatigue that's kicking in with his base? And I'm gonna be in America in a month or so, guys. So I'll do some street interviews, maybe when I'm over there, if you guys would like to see that and I'll see what people's thoughts are on the ground. And now onto the last part where the hens are saying how much they love him, like a crazy uncle or cousin or something like that. And watch the way that they give him cuddles and kisses and compliments. And in this situation, he's able to really let his charm and charisma flow. And even though this bit isn't about politics, it goes to show that this is how he used to be viewed in the media. He was known as a warm, fun sort of character 
who was the epitome of a winner and was able to command every single room that he went into. But then he ran for office and he went up against the establishment and they all got in line to start slandering him and destroying his reputation. Well, we very rarely do this and it may be setting a bad precedent, but we love him so. We've asked Donald Trump to stay for the second segment. Real fast, could you beat Obama? I think if I run and win and get the nomination, I definitely think I could beat Obama. We're doing very, very poorly as a country. Okay, I think that, I could beat him. Uh, okay, yes, you do. Okay. I want to change it up. Or I wouldn't run. Right. If you didn't think. All right. Yeah. Just, we're going to change it a little bit and go to Celebrity Apprentice. You got a crazy cast this season, Donald. I want to start with one of the people. You do. Okay, Gary Busey. Tell us about Gary Busey. He just seems a little... Woo! Yeah, he, he is, I'll tell you, he's great. He's an amazing character, but he's a total genius, but he's nuts. So it's a combination. A genius and at what? He As just, a, he comes up with thoughts and comes up with statements. Every, everything and everything is that he's got initials for everything. Oh, it's, it's amazing. You know, he'll come up with a word and then he'll have 15 words behind it. He really is. He's a brilliant guy, but he's got some big issues. Makes what about the emotion there? Because Meatloaf, I never knew there was so much emotion yeah. there. Oh, my God. Yeah. Meatloaf is a big surprise to me because he's this tough, big, strong guy. He weighs yeah. 270 pounds. And every time I talk to him, he starts crying. Do you get emotional like he's that? Like you no. don't like it. Because you no. like Speaker well, John Boehner. I said Banner. I don't like that. I mean, I respect John Boehner, but I don't want a person that cries. But you're very I mean, tender with Meatloaf, Don. No, 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 I, no I think Meatloaf is fantastic. And I cried? think John Boehner's fantastic. Last time I cried? Yeah. I don't know. Which divorce what was it? Come on. <laughs> You know what? There's nothing wrong with crying. Not, I don't want to make like, oh, big. No. I'm some big tough no. guy. You're There's not, nothing wrong with crying. I'm just not a big. Ivanka's having a baby. She's having a baby. Maybe you'll cry then. What about, what about, about the women crying. on the show? Well, because you, uh, Dion Warwick is getting a baby. Dion Warwick and Nina, yeah. gets beat and up she, so badly. Yeah. Dion's look crabby. Dion is tougher than people think, but she gets beat up. But I'll tell you, he gets beat up more than anybody I've ever seen in the history of reality television. Your very close friend, Star Jones. She gets. Well, Nene is tough. She, and so Nene is, is Star. from the Atlanta house. So is Star. They go at each other. It's unbelievable. You know, they're both smart. They're both tough. But Nene is a very big woman. And, you know, physically, just a really yeah. big, tall. powerful yeah, woman. Right. She's tall. And she is very intimidated. You have to see what but happens. But they were on the Star, same level, right? Mark my word. Yeah. Star, no, not in terms of size or no, intelligence. No, no, in terms of, in terms of, you know, that the they personality can, personality-wise. Personality-wise, they're both great. <clears throat> I will tell you, it's the greatest thing I've ever... It makes Omarosa... Remember Omarosa? Yes. It, makes, it makes Omarosa like a very kind, sweet woman. This week. Right. This, for the next four weeks, she actually. It goes on for a period of time, but you this week... This. I love it. You love it. I do so love we should it. watch it. But I, but I really want to get to this, the, the, the roast that was on Comedy oh, Central. Wow. This that. roast, oh, Donald was so raunchy. And you're not known for being raunchy. I mean, they, you had Snoop on stage, you know, smoking. You they, it was a lot too. of sexual humor. What, how in the world did you, it was for charity, and but. how were the ratings? The, it was the best ratings they ever got. Okay. It was the so highest I, they I ever have got. to explain this. I have to explain. I did it for a very specific... I would never have done it in a million years because I've seen the roast. They're brutal. And this was more brutal than any of them. <laughs> I did it because they paid me a lot of money and I gave it all to charity. So okay. I said to myself, am I going to sit there for an hour and be just horribly abused and then go home and hand a lot of money to different AIDS right. research and lots of great charities? Or am I going to sit home, watch television and not give anything? And I decided to sit... Mm. And I was actually happy with it. I was happy with how well it did. You know, it was the their most successful is, show. No, what do you think about on, the situation tell there? Tell me, how did it feel like when they really attack you and they do a hair well, job? Really your daughter well, was the hair I'm used to. Excuse me, you attacked my hair all the time. I got you used mind? to. You were I worse stopped. than they were. I stopped. No, no, you were worse than they were. Do you mind when people attack your hair? No. Is it any, is and there you know anything? what, Barbara, it's, it, you know what, look. It's real. It's really mine, you is know. Is there anything here? Come on, baby. together over the years. She is very sexy, I want to tell you. Uh, he knows how to get to me. Is there well, anything, is there the anything that you are you insecure see. about? Uh, that you want to say on TV. I don't want to say. You know, I probably do. I don't want to give it up. Let somebody figure it out someday. Yeah. That's right. Don't, I, don't, don't, tell tell I hate, don't you know, give ammunition to the enemy. The reason we don't have the big stars like they used to with Clark Abel and all, you know, Clark Abel didn't go on like your show and say, I'm an alcoholic, I'm this. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now they get on, they cry, they're alcoholics, yeah. they're you this, mean? they're drug addicts. And you say, huh, they're just like everyone else. Yeah. So if I do have an insecurity, I'm not talking. <laughs> So 
far, there's nothing you haven't been successful at. You're a great character. You're a great friend of ours. We don't know whether you should be president, but we do know that you will enjoy watching. But you do admit I'd be a great president. You have possibly. Barbara, don't and blow so, it. The you're celebrity you're apprentice. To the celebrity yeah, apprentice. Yeah, you want to say something else? Besides yeah. that? No. But I don't think you're a real Republican. <laughs> I no, think I'm a real I think you're The Apprentice well, Sunday nights. Check your local. So, really, a very interesting throwback there, and it puts a lot of things in perspective for me, at least. When you look at Trump's reputation now and the way that people hate him so much, it's hard to imagine that once upon a time he was a universally pretty liked character. And it goes to show the power of the propaganda machine. I mean, look at Kamala Harris. The reverse has happened with her. She was universally disliked a few weeks ago. Harris, sir, what do you think? Well, yeah, I'm hearing a lot of Trump today. Black men typically are with Donald Trump. Black women are typically with Kamala Harris. Why is that? Because Kamala Harris is part of the Biden administration. They think they can go to a church, kiss a black baby, or listen to some hip hop, or get a rapper to come in front of us. And so the black community is a little bit more hip and conscious today. People saw her as this annoying, cackling, incompetent woman who got to the top in very mysterious ways. And then the media came out in full force and got behind her. She hasn't even said anything. She hasn't even laid any policies out. But apparently, she's beating Trump in the polls in some ways. New poll from High Ground Public Affairs, and it shows that Harris is now moving ahead of former President Donald Trump. And this is something that we have to really contend with in the modern media environment. People who don't do thorough research will just be swayed by whatever the media is telling them and whatever is trending on social media. And when you look at the two candidates running for presidency in the USA, this time around, it's just a perfect example. One of them used to be liked because he was extremely competent, and now he is hated, and people see him as the picture of evil across the world. Whereas the other one used to be thoroughly disliked and is incompetent, but now, all of a sudden, apparently she has all of this support. So, plenty of food for thought with this one, guys. Looking forward to reading your comments. Also, make sure to like the video if you haven't done that already and subscribe to the channel. All my links are going to be below if you want to find me on other platforms. And also, if you'd like to watch another one, right here. Till next time, I'm Jake. This is Jodosling TV, keeping you armed and dangerous.